Hello everybody, welcome back. A few jobs to do today. Um, gonna get some seeds sown. Uh, parsnips, probably some more carrots, spring onions, etc. All stuff I can put direct in the ground now this time of year. Now it's warming up a little bit anyway. But because it's warming up and it's been so wet, slugs are a problem. And I've just been inspecting my brassicas and there's a bit of damage there. So um, first job today is get this uncovered, go along that bed, uh, give it a weed, take off any stuff that the slugs have already attacked that's already had it really. Um, I've got some spare broccoli that I can put out and I'm going to put some beer traps in as well. So that's the first job. So these are sprouts and they're not too badly affected at the moment. I'm going to take off these lower leaves where the slugs have had a go. And the problem is this ground, as you can see, is really lumpy. It's just because it's new soil. Um, it's only the first year really that it's been grown in. Did a little bit on it last year, but not much. And it takes time to get a nice um, soil. It takes years, you know. I mean, I, I call it an old man's soil where it's been worked on for years and years and years and organic matter and it goes really nice and crumbly and friable. That said, I am planning on doing no dig, ultimately. But it's going to take time again. You can't afford to do the whole garden in one go with compost and the cost of it, etc. So it's really a case of making do, doing a bit each year as time goes on and improving the soil and because it's so lumpy it gives the slugs places to hide slugs and snails places to hide so it can be living under one of these clumps of soil near the plant coming out on a night to feed if you look at this one here it's been absolutely decimated that might come back yet yeah, actually it may well come back if I can keep the slugs off it if that is that is an if I've got a potato growing there get that out and like I say in a perfect world this soil would be broken up a lot more and be a lot more friable which helps to keep down the slugs, gives them less habitat to live in. But that isn't the case. We have to deal with what we have got. And that's the plan. That's a stone. Go behind the wall. Piece of brick, a piece of plastic. So, what I'm going to do is put a beer trap in the middle of these here, and hopefully, that will attract some of the slugs to the beer trap and kill them. And all the beer trap is is a pot in the ground, which you can put different things in them to attract the slugs. I tend to use beer, 
or lager and they're attracted by the yeast I believe and they go in and drowned basically they go in and they can't get out so I'm going to put one here in the middle Now, you can use any sort of pot, these little plastic pots that you get when you order a Chinese sometimes or an Indian, whatever, they're quite good. But I didn't have enough of those, so I've cut down some pot bottles. Now, slugs don't like to go over anything sharp, particularly, and because the edge of this bottle would have been sharp where I've cut it, I've just put a piece of duct tape on there to make it easier for them to get in to the pot. And as you just want to backfill around it. Trying to get it level with the top of the soil as best as you can. That's quite difficult when the soil is this lumpy. But All we're trying to do is make it nice, attractive, smelly, inviting meal for the slugs and they will come along, crawl into it and drown. That's, that's the whole purpose of this. So lager in there this is just some cheap lager that we bought for Christmas don't need to fill it right up and that's that now so I'm gonna go along and do all of these give it a weed as a go put the beer traps in remove any dead stuff off the plants that is attracting the slugs because slugs are attracted by decaying decaying matter and uh, by removing any leaves that are already damaged and dying it does help to prevent them coming back for more right I'm gonna get on with this and I'll catch you in a bit so here this one is literally just been eaten away um, so I'm gonna take that one out put a new a spare broccoli in and that's what all these plants here are, they're all broccoli. So quite not too concerned about that one. What I am a little bit miffed about is further up I've got my cauliflower and they've taken a couple of those and I don't have any spare cauliflower so I'm gonna to have to replace those with broccoli. So a bit annoyed about that. If I have a good dig around here, I might even find the culprit. Possibly. No, doesn't look like it. Okay. So I'm going to plant, plant the uh, spare plant deep because they've all gone a little bit spindly been left in these pots. I 
Let's hope that that one survives. Okay, once you've got your beer pots in place, it's a good idea to cover them with something, but so the slugs can still get in. Um, otherwise, when it rains, all that will happen is the rain fills the pots up, it dilutes the beer, and ultimately stops them from working. So you can actually buy um, little plastic pots with a clip on roof specifically for this you can get them in the garden centers little slug traps and what have you but they cost money and this is free um, so I've got some old roof slates that aren't needed so I'm just gonna break these in half and use those And all I need to do is get a couple of these big clumps. Put them around like that. Sit that on the top. The slugs can still get in there, but the rain won't fill the pots up. And uh, Ruin, ruin the uh, what I'm trying to achieve there. So. Okay, so that's. Some plants replaced, only two or three. Weeded, broke up the soil a bit where I can. Slug pots put in and uh, just had a look around looking for slugs as well while I was doing it all. Found a couple and got rid of those. So now, I've just got to get that covered back over before the next lot of problems arrive like aphids and a bit early for cabbage white yet but I'm sure aphids are around I find that the brassicus family seems to get attacked by just about everything slugs, snails, aphids caterpillars, butterfly, cutworm everything um, quite hard to keep them going to a size where they can sustain their fight off all of these predators okay so this is the parsnip bed and all these were sown in January and February in the dissolving pots and planted out really early they were planted out in February time covered with half pot bottles just to protect them and they're doing really well now so I'm pleased with that but it is now time to really get all the parsnips sown for this year um, and also get my parsnips sown to enter the Potty Mouth Garden Club Parsnip Challenge so all of these here are white gem uh, up to this stick this this stick in the ground represents the last row of white gem in fact that could be one coming up just there difficult to tell if it's a weed or a parsnip at the moment I need to uh, leave that 
let it do its thing until I can tell what it is. So I'm sowing, planting these out in a dice pattern, a diagonal pattern, because then I get a bit more in for the space that I've got. So my last row was here. So there would have been one there, one there, one there. You can just see the little indents actually in the soil where I put the last row in. So I want to come about So on. And the reason I'm doing it like this is I can get each hole, I will put at least two seeds, if three go in, that's absolutely fine. And then if more than one germinates, because parsnip seeds are notoriously bad at germinating, I will snip them off, weaker ones off, with some scissors. I won't pull them out, because if I pull them out, I could disturb the root of the one that I want to carry on growing. So the parsnips for the, uh, the challenge are Gladiator F1 variety, which means uh, they're pretty canker resistant, etc. And I'm just going to try and get a couple in each one. And this soil actually feels warm. Quite surprising. Three in that one, but it doesn't matter. And that is it cover those over I'm not going to worry about watering because it's pretty wet and we're going to get some rain a bit later not much but a shower just enough to wet these up a bit more
So between the rows of parsnips, I'm going to sow some radish. And the reason for that is radish are really quick growing and they will be grown and gone and eaten by the time these parsnips are anywhere near uh, ready. So I'm just going to make a shallow shallow trough just with my finger nothing special I'll put one here as well and this is called intercropping where you you sow a fast growing crop in between a much slower growing crop and therefore you get two crops out the same piece of ground and uh, maximise your efforts so the variety I'm going to sow are Vienna F1, never grown these before, they're like a little um, ball type uh, radish grow to about the size of a golf ball apparently I'm going to aim to get a seed about every couple of inches. You could do it a bit closer than that if you wanted to, but it will suit what we want. And if I drop two or three in a, one place, I'm not concerned about it. I shall just leave them and let them push each other apart. And of course the other thing that this does is more plants growing in an area it helps to suppress the weeds a little bit helps to cover the ground shut the light out it just makes your life a bit easier so I'm going to put in another few rows of carrots no sign of the ones I sowed a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, yet. But one of the good things about having a YouTube channel is you can go back and look and see what you did. And I put this here and I was thinking, but is that actually where I put my last row, where this label is? And I've just been and checked on the, ch on the video that I did and it is pretty much about there. So I'm going to start my next row here. rows in and I'm sowing the same variety which is Nantes and I'm going to put my label move it over so I know that that's where I've got to and then in a couple of weeks time I'll sow some more
over here I'm going to sow some spring onion in a similar method to what I did with the parsnips in that I'm going to make a hole like that where I want to plant them I'll do a couple of rows we do like spring onions and these are white Lisbon excellent onion but what I'm going to do is put eight or ten seeds in each hole so that they grow in a bunch like this these were multi sown in um, module trays in January or maybe February could be February yeah 13th of February uh, and then planted out a few weeks ago and the reason I sow eight or ten together is they grow push each other apart but how many times do you want one spring onion you don't you always go and buy a bunch don't you ten or whatever and you're always going to pick more than one so by growing them in bunches you just go out and pick a bunch so I'm not counting these seeds at all I'm just putting in what looks like eight or ten seeds Some have got 12 in and some have only got 6 in. I'm really not bothered. Doesn't matter. And there we go. Cover those over. Now there are many ways you can sow spring onions. One way, and this is something that an old guy taught me once. And that was... Just prepare your ground and then just broadcast them, just throw them on the ground and leave them. Walk away and leave them. Don't even cover them over. And it does work. I've, I've done it several times over the years. But this way is a little bit more controlled and uses a bit less space. So I do prefer this method. So I'm going to move my label to there and I know that that's where I put my last row. There we go, spring onion sun. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that. A little bit about combating the slugs and uh, just some seeds that I'm sowing direct now. So I've got all my parsnips sown now this year. Um, I like to get those going early in, this, in the season because they take such a long time to grow and they store so well in the ground as well. So, um, they'll be good right up till Christmas so thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel and if you haven't subscribed already please do and on that note thank you so much to all the subscribers um, so far uh, and for all your comments and likes and everything else you know we're nearly at 500 subscribers now so what an achievement you know and uh, thank you very much so until next time, stay safe and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.